10 News has confirmed the San Diego Police Department is on standby to assist Custom and Border Protection agents. Joining us tonight, former San Diego Police Officer Ray Shea. He's been a commanding a SWAT commanding officer with the San Diego Police Department for 25 years. What are some of the physical barriers that you're seeing out there right now? Well, there's a lot of challenges. Now, first of all, they have a lot of people that are trying to force their way in, but mm -hmm. the way they have it set up that they're doing the best they can, but there are obviously with the large wall there, it's, it's, a, it's a very substantial block. And the deployment of the tear gas was absolutely necessary because it actually stopped them from continuing entering the U.S. So um, it turned out, you know, sufficient to stop what the threat was. Okay, and we're looking at that tear gas right now, and we were also hearing that they had deployed rubber bullets in this. And you had brought up a good point earlier: is that there are children, there are there are babies in this caravan. So what kind of challenges are agents up against knowing this? Well, there are significant challenges, especially with darkness coming as well. Mm -hmm. But if you have smaller children, if even adults, if you're going to shoot rubber bullets into a crowd, you have to be very specific where they're targeted. And obviously these federal agents have a lot of experience and a lot of practice, a lot of training, how to handle these type of situations. So they have the proper equipment and to look at, they closed the international border and no one was injured. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's a successful operation. And what we're looking at here um, in that video was the, when they broke through the wall. So we're seeing that tear gas use, the rubber bullets. But what is the next step? Because we're seeing agents, uh, migrants are throwing rocks, projectiles at them. And we saw in video here, too, where they're kicking their shields. Well, the, the next step is if a crowd is overtly violent and they're causing damage or they're hurting or injuring people, that you want to move towards the crowd and disperse the crowd. Obviously, it's a unique challenge because you have an international border you're facing and that our, our property line in essence stops at a certain point and you got a partner with Mexican police, border patrol, all the different agencies on both sides of the border. And I can imagine right now, they're all in a room figuring out what, it, what are we gonna do tomorrow? How are we gonna make sure we don't have to close down the international border? So there's a lot of very smart people working very hard at both the federal, state, and local, CHP, San Diego PD, uh, Chief Neslite and city officials are figuring out, hey, what's the best way to handle this? And as night closes in, we saw in the last 20 minutes or so, we were watching in the newsroom with you, they were adding more of that razor wire uh, right where you see the San Ysidro Port, that sign right underneath there. They just added more. Well, some of the reasons they do that is a large crowd, when they break up, you have 300, 500, 1,000 people. It's like water. So you got to find a way to stop all that water and all those gaps because one person can get through about 24 inches. So the razor wire will actually act as a physical barrier and that way it's safer, it's a deterrent. And then with a strong uniform presence, you're sending the message that we're not going to allow this to happen. And safety, of course, the main priority for both sides out there tonight. Yes, I mean, I was thrilled to hear that no one was injured on either mm -hmm. side. You closed down the busiest border in the world and they did a great job. Ray, thank you as always for your expertise. Thank you for coming You're in tonight. Welcome.